Mat Lovers, welcome back to my channel. For the newcomers, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment, and click the bell button for more updates on my videos. Mat Lovers, how are you all? It's been a while since I uploaded a video on my channel. This time, I have to make up for the time being that I was not around. Uh, keep on watching and let's have some fun for our vlog today. Alright, Mat Lovers. So, before we're going to start, let's have first a recap regarding the previous vlog that we have that was um, uh, all about zero exponents. The rule says that when a non-zero number is being raised to zero, the answer is always one. Bear that one in mind. And of course, let's not forget the integration. When everything uh, is raised to zero or when everything becomes zero, we just have to remember that we have one God from up above who will guide us, who is always with us. And all we need to do is just to believe in Him, trust in Him, and everything will be in place or everything will be alright. So let's not waste our time with lovers since we have missed each other, am I right? Okay, this time we're going to discuss another type of exponent and that is negative exponent. Or should I say negative exponents? What does the rule say when it comes to negative exponents? So it says that if x is any non-zero number and n is a natural number, then we will have this equation or formula. x to the power of negative n equals 1 over x to the power of positive n. So in this case, math lovers, uh, you have noticed that here on this first side and side, we have x is being raised to negative n. And it has been equated to 1 over x to the power of positive n. So how it happens, like, we do not want negativities, we do not want problems, we do not want anything that is negative. So we have to make things right and change everything that is negative to positive. So that's what is happening in this formula. Changing a neg negative exponent to positive exponent. Before we're going to apply uh, the law or the rule of negative exponents, let's have first these numbers or these equations. First number is 5. If a number is 5, of course, this is a whole number. If this 5 has its denominator, which is 1. Okay, so 5 again is just equal to 5 over 1. Meaning to say, a whole number has always its denominator, which is 1, or imaginary 1. So if you have 5 over 1, still it is equal to 5. And we'll have a repeating process for that. Again, 5 is just equal to 5 over 1, where the numerator is 5 and the denominator is 1. And still it is equal to 5. Let's now have our first example on negative exponents. We have this equations right here. We have our final answer. And of course, this is our main problem. If we are given with this problem 5 raised to negative 2, what do you think is our answer? The rule of having negative exponents. As I said earlier, that if you have 5 raised to negative 2, it is just equal to 5 raised to negative 2 over 1. Or what I'm trying to say is, if you have this kind of problem, uh, always it has its imaginary denominator 1. After that, uh, for my own technique or uh, to make things easier, I will share to you now how we have this answer. So upon having this, since we have negative a negative exponent, our goal is to change our negative exponent to positive. So for me, in changing a negative exponent to positive exponent to make it easier, I just transfer the uh, I just transfer the positioning of the numbers. In this case, our five raised to negative two is at the numerator, and we have here the denominator is one. To change this to negative, all I need to do is to transfer it to its opposite side. This is now equal to one over five squared. As you can see, we have here from the numerator, I transferred it to the denominator. So the moment it has been transferred from negative, it is now, or it now becomes positive. And after it is now positive, I just need to simplify further the numbers. So we have 1 here in the numerator. 
5 times 5 for the exponent, 5 squared, is equal to 1 over 25. And this is now my final answer by having the problem 5 raised to negative 2. Okay, let me show you our second example. So our problem, our main problem is to raised to negative 5. We have negative exponent, negative 5. Our test again is to change this negative exponent to positive. 2 raised to negative 5 is just equal to 2 raised to negative 5 over 1. It has an imaginary denominator 1 and I'm writing it now here to make things clear. 2 raised to negative 5 again is just equal to 2 raised to negative 5 over 1. Numerator and we have here our denominator. Since the exponent is negative, so I have to make things right and change this to positive. I just need to transfer its position from the numerator and going to transfer it to the denominator. So this expression now is just equal to 1 over 2 raised to positive 5. From negative in the numerator, I transfer it to the denominator so it becomes positive. And after that, forget about this, focus on this. We have now 1 over 32. Why 32? Because 2 raised to 5 is just the same as saying 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals 32. Okay? On the other way around, not lovers, I'll give you this third example. Our third example is 1 over 5 raised to negative 3. This is uh, different from the first two examples that we have. This time, we have a fractional form. We have 1 over 5 raised to negative 3. The numerator is 1. The denominator is 5 raised to negative 3. Our goal again is to change negative exponents to positive. All I need to do is to change the position. Since it's negative, so I have to transfer it to its opposite side to make it positive. So from the denominator, this is now equal to 5 raised to 3 positive over 1. So the positioning now is different and exponent now is becoming positive. After that one, I'm going to uh, simplify further. From the denominator, I transfer it to the numerator. It becomes positive. So we have 5 raised to 3 is just equal to 5 times 5 times 5. Or that is equal to 125. Over, of course, that is 1. This is now 125 over 1 or 125 divided by 1. It is equal to 125. And this is our final answer. Okay, not lovers, so I do not want to make this video any more longer. So I have to end up right here having three examples for the negative exponents. I'm going to give more examples the next time around. So I just don't want to make things complicated this time. I want you to focus on the three examples, repeat this video if you find it uh, a bit harder to understand. But all in all, for me, in applying the uh, negative exponent or the rules in negative exponent, for me to change the negative sign, I just need to transfer the positioning or change the positioning from the numerator, change it to the denominator to make it positive and simplify further and that will make things easy for me. So if you like my technique or strategy in answering, uh, you can apply it. Okay, my lovers. So I hope you have learned from our discussion for this time. Keep on learning, keep on watching, and be my love.